reason With all power in your hands You have given me a second chance Hallelujah, hallelujah, yeah Really lovely to see you. Before I speak uh, um, the message that I prepared, there's something I want to speak about, and it's to do with this room. <coughs> Um, some of you have made comments that this room's quite a dark room, and it, that's true. But today we've got the windows as open, I think, as they can be. But you'll probably have noticed that there are windows that have the vertical blinds. And when they are across, it sort of stops some of the light coming through, but you can still see some of the light. I felt this week like this is a picture of our life, that... We often live in, in a room, there is light, there's shafts of light that come from, if you like as Christians, from, from God. But I felt God say, I want you to open the blinds. I want you to pull back the blinds so that you have a greater awareness of everything that is outside of your current experience. Now for some of you, you're going through really difficult times. And answers to prayer, like we've heard specifically two about today, they give us a glimpse that there is more outside. Can we just open our eyes as we open the blinds for the spiritual awareness that, in Jesus' words, the kingdom is here now. It's just there. And we live in the, confi the confines of our circumstances, but he wants us to live in the, in the understanding and the reality that although we are creatures of time, that eternity is there. It's here already. We just, sometimes we need to pull the blinds back, which are on the inside, pull the blinds back to allow us to experience more of what he wants us to experience. That wasn't my message. Okay, now get into my message. Um, I'm a creature of habit, uh, probably bo boringly so, and so my morning routine is teeth, uh, shower, get dressed, um, do my hair, oh, uh, so teeth, uh, sh shower, um, um, deodorant, moisturise, get dressed, do my hair, um, and clean my glasses. And so that's the order I do it every single day. And if somebody interrupts me in the middle of that, it throws me for the whole day. I'll suddenly realise that my glasses are messed up. Or my girls will say to me, Dad, have you done your hair today? Well, I don't very often look in the mirror. And, and I suddenly think, oh no, what happened? Oh, I had to do something. Somebody asked me to do something when I was in the middle of my routine. And, and habits, we, we are, I don't know if you're as much of a creature of habit as I am, um, but COVID has thrown us out of sync with all of the things that were normal routines for us. Now, for some of you, you're well back on track. For many, you, you, you've never quite got back on track with the things that were good things. We ditched loads of bad habits, hopefully, during that uh, pandemic experience, which was uh, ho hopefully never to be repeated. Uh, but but there are some things which are good that we've not re-established. And really, want to, I want to speak a little bit about that today. What are the essential habits that we need to have? Rick Warren, a uh, famous American pastor uh, who I really like, says, your character is essentially the sum of your habits. I quite like that. So whatever it is that you habitually do, that's what makes you. That's what... That's what you are uh, because habits will change you if you start a new habit people do that at the beginning of the new year don't they if you've joined a gym you try and start something a habit that will change you for some reason you start a diet or whatever it is or you start to save money in a different way you're hoping that some habit will change where you end up at the end of the year now we know that um, that often fails after a few weeks but the principle is that the habits, the things that you regularly do, not the things that you start to do and then give up, but the things that you regularly do shape you and they determine who you are. And so uh, I want to look at two top habits this morning, and they are two habits, if you're a Christian, that will determine where you are at the end of the year. 
they would determine where you are in five years time they would determine where you are in 10 years time they would determine where you are at the end of your life these top habits now before i get into them i'm going to read a um, a short little um response that jesus gave to gives to somebody who says what's the most important thing so this young um wealthy person comes and he says what's the most important thing this leader comes to him and says what's what is above everything what's the most important thing and this is jesus's res response in mark chapter 12 verse 29 it says the most important one he's talking about commandments answered jesus is this here O israel the lord our god the lord is one love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength that's pretty well covered everything. Love God with all of who you are. And the second is this, Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these. Now, if you step back a minute from those two things, they, they are both about relationship. They're about relationship with God. They're about relationship with one another. Not our looking after ourself, but our relationship to the people that we encounter. Jesus was asked, who's your neighbour? He says, well, who, who's in need? Who's around you? Who's around you? Who's in need around you? Habits and resolutions, and uh, that's what this series is. We're starting a, a short series on this. Are things that are very easy to make, but really easy to break. And encouragement or fear, which probably people oscillate between, don't motivate. We need motivation to do good habits, but encouragement, go on, do it, you can do it, go on, you can do it, it's not enough. And fear, if you don't do this, you're going to be overweight, out of shape, etc. They don't have the desired impact. We know all that. We know, we know that the encouragement and the fear of themselves don't do it. We need something which is a positive attractive thing that draws us to that outcome which we desire uh, before i get into the meat of it i'm just really another little analogy um so i don't know if you're aware that when uh, people are coaching young people to give up smoking they don't tell people oh it's going to have serious health impacts you could develop this disease and that disease what they speak about is the condition of your skin because they want to be attractive. And so the condition of their skin, oh my goodness, if I smoke, my skin is going to go dry and maybe different things going to happen and I won't be as attractive. That becomes a motivating factor. It's something they want, not something they fear, something they want. I was away I was saying to, to Pat a little bit earlier I was away this week I don't like being away I love coming home and the reason I love coming home is because I love Christine I love my wife I love my family I want to be around them and so when I'm away I just like okay I, I, how long do I need to be here for what's the purpose what am I here for and then when I can get back I'm, I'm keen to get back why do I want to get back not to do some great exploits not some projects, just to be together. So we can sit on the sofa, so we can watch the TV, so that we can walk around, have a walk in the, in the town. What, what, just to be together. It's just a nice thing to be. It's because I love her. So my motivation to get home is not to do something, it's just to be with the one that I love. When we speak about habits in our Christian walk, then we need to not be doing it because of compulsion, commandment, but out of love. And when we have a true picture of love, that will be the positive motivator to draw near to God. As God says, love with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, everything that you are. So I've said that there were two, the, the top two, but I haven't told you what they are yet. You're on the edge of your seats. The first one is simply this, reading your Bible. It's reading your Bible. I would say, add to that, daily. Reading your Bible daily. 
Psalm 119, verse 33 to 35. Teach me, Lord, the way of your decrees, that I may follow it to the end. Give me understanding, so that I may keep your law and obey it with all my heart. Direct me in the path of your commands, for there I find delight. My pattern for reading the Bible, and there are many, many different patterns, and I've been a pastor for a lot of years, so you'd expect me to have some sort of fairly ingrained um, patterns. When I was a, a new Christian, they were very different to they are now, so I'm not saying this is the pattern people need to follow. I'm saying that over a period of time, you develop different patterns. But my pattern at the moment, uh, just to be real, is that I use um, an app called The Bible in One Year. It's by Nikki Gumbel who is from the Alpha course. Some of you will have done the Alpha course. You know a bit about Nicky Gumbel. And he does um, a plan for the year, a bit of the Old Testament, a bit of the New Testament, a bit of either Psalms or Proverbs. And he says a little bit about it. And you can either read it on an app or you can listen to it on, on an app. So for this last year, that's what I've been doing. But I haven't finished last year's yet. So I've got behind. Am I bothered about that? No. Will I get to the end of the year, uh, end of the Bible? Yes, because it's a habit, it's a, a pattern that I've just developed over time. The other thing I'm using at the moment is something called Lectio 365. And Lectio 365, again, it's an app-driven thing. It's a prayer. It's a way of starting and ending your day with somebody narrating some prayer and a couple of Bible verses with just this most soothing background that starts your day or ends your day in a really restful way. And I've found that to be really helpful. There have been times that I've used this and times when I've stopped using it. Different patterns, different seasons, but I feel like I just want to say, what do I do? And it's a daily thing. Now you can tell that because I've got out of sync for a year, I must have missed a few days. Well, I have. If I miss a day, we're busy, or something else happens, if I'm away, it just means that my year extends a bit. So I'm at day 287, I think, of last year's readings. So you can work that out. That means probably one day a week I've missed somewhere along the, the line. I'm not, I'm not um, beating myself up about that. If you miss a day, don't worry. If you miss a week, you notice... If you miss more than a week, other people start to notice because your habits form your character and the habits you drop have an impact on how you live your life. Why did I read that little verse, Psalm 119, verses 33 to 35? Because it was in my readings this week. And as I was preparing to talk about Bible reading, this one comes up. That's amazing. God speaks in the time that you are going through certain things with specific things for your life at that moment. That's my experience. That's why I do it every day. Because I know that God will speak to me through it. I want God to speak to me. Do you want God to speak to you if you're a Christian? Then I hope you do. Then you, he will. But put yourself in a place where he can. Read your Bible every day and he will. I love it in that verse because it says, it says, for there I find delight. When we read the Bible, you think, oh, that's a bit dry, a bit dusty. It's going to be a bit boring. Yes, there are bits in the boring that are, uh, bits in the Bible that are boring. Yes, you did hear a pastor say that. It's okay to say that. It's all right. There are bits that are very difficult, difficult to understand, difficult to read through our uh, contemporary view of culture, etc., um, and bits that are just a bit dusty, like long lists of people or long lists of rules that the people in the Old Testament had to live by to be um, pure for priestly functions, etc. A whole load of things. But all of it is there for a reason. It's not all there for you for today, but sometimes you need to understand what those people were going through to understand how God will help you through the things that, that you will go through. I believe as we read regularly, we find delight. That is my experience. God speaks. Let me read a couple of verses. These are key verses for me. Do not conform, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. 
do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. Input equals influence. What you take in is influencing you. Whether that's what you read, the conversations you have with other people, the friendships that you form, whether it's the Netflix series that you watch, whether it's how much view of, and, of the news you watch, whether it's the social media um, and, and people that you follow um, on social media, you know they're called influencer, influencers for a reason, don't you? It's like, hello, people are called influencers on social media. Why? And why do companies give them things? Because they know that this thing that's called our feed, our feed, the clues in the words, the feed will influence who we become. What you eat influences who you become. Your feed in social media influences who you become. Make decisions, make choices about those things. Yes, you can watch cats um, doing funny things. Yes, you can watch um, celebrities doing certain things. But what's your diet? What is your diet? Choose your inputs because they influence you. I used to work with people that were caught up in addictions and one of the phrases that stuck in my mind that they would often use is stinking thinking. Like stinking thinking. It's like distorted wrong thinking. And it's really pervasive. We, we can be very um, constrained by the thought process that we have in our minds. So this, this, these verses in Romans 12 says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How are you going to be transformed by the renewing of your mind? You need to know new thinking, good thinking, correct thinking, truthful thinking. Where are you going to get an understanding of truth from? Not like someone else's truth versus someone else's truth. Real truth objective solid truth we're in a culture that exists in the well that's their truth perspective it's a load of nonsense you need to understand that this idea of subjective truth is is completely hollow it's it's per, it's it's culture saying we give ourselves permission to think what we like do what we like and be who we want to be it's impossible for Christians to live according to that frame of reference. We have to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So if that form of thinking and form of language has become part of you, then I just want to be straight this morning and say you need to cut that off because it's distortion. You need to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Not my thinking, not someone else's thinking, the truth of what God says about how we live our lives. How will we do that? We will do it by taking the word in. Let the input be the influence. Let our diet be impacting who we become. The truth is that you are loved exactly as you are. Hear that again. Loved exactly as you are for who you are god loves you he 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 loves you more than you can possibly describe or imagine he loves you beyond measure it's not based on how good you are or the things that you do whether you think you're a good christian or not whether you read your bible every day or not you don't get extra stars in heaven for any of those things God loves you beyond measure just because of who you are. He's given you purpose in your life. You're significant. This is who you are. You're, you're not just a number in God's economy. You're, you are a real person that he knows and he cares about. And you are, if you're a Christian, 
you are forgiven. So all the stuff that you know about yourself, either from the present or from the past, God has forgiven that. It's, it's, he's chosen to do away with it. It's forgotten. It's removed from you. And you're carrying around these massive suitcases of things that you know that you've done and the way that you think, oh, these are, these are my characteristics. This is who I am. God says, I've forgiven you all of that. You are starting again. You've got new clothes to wear. You're made righteous and pure and holy, regardless of what all of that past looks like. This is the truth. This is the good news. This is why the, the, the Bible, the gospel, Jesus, is relevant for every person because every person needs to know that they can be forgiven and have a new start. And if we have a little distortion in our thinking that somehow God's view of me is less because of the things I've done, then that will bring a condemnation and a fear and a, and a distancing yourself from God. And God says, I love you. I care for you. I've forgiven you. And I've made a way for you to be pure and clean and holy, regardless of any of that stuff in your past. Another verse. Hebrews 4 verse 12. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. How will it divide? It's sharp. It's living. It will divide when you hear it, when you read it. You need to expose yourself to this truth. And it is truth. And it changes everything. It cuts through the lies that our culture says about you. It says this is who you are. You're loved, you're forgiven, and you have purpose and significance in my plan, God says. This, his word is living and active. It will speak into your day, speak into your life, and it will help you. Hebrews 5, 13. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by consistent use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. If we exist on a diet of fridge magnets, then we will be living as if we're drinking milk all the time, as babies that never grow up. If you live on a diet of tweets, quotes, that's not how you grow solid and mature. You need to get some goodness, some nourishment into your being that will strengthen your bones, which will enable you to grow and to mature and become fully formed as an adult. And only when you're an adult do you have the reproductive capability of then telling other people about the goodness of Jesus because you've experienced that growth in your own life. Um, the writer of Hebrews is saying this to, to believers. He's saying, listen, don't just live on milk. You need to, you need to be on stronger food. So it just means reading the Bible every day. It just means taking it in. And in a posture of, I want to learn more, I want to know more. Not because Adrian stands at the front and says, you should read your Bible every day, but because God loves you so much. And if you love him, you'll want to hear his voice speaking into your everyday life. How are you going to do that? Well, engage in a conversation and spend time um, reading what he has to say to you. I said there were two. I spent most of my time speaking about one because it is by far and away the most important habit that you can build in your life which will determine um, your tra traject can't say that word, trajectory, your pathway of life. By far and away the greatest thing. Because it's God's word. It's living. It's active. But Jesus says, and there's also this other thing, he says, and they're both important, 
It's about your relationship with one another, with people. I believe it's about Christian friendship. The way that often that's expressed in church life is that the formation of small groups so that relationships with Christians can develop in that culture and environment where there are people there that will uh, be a few steps ahead of you on the path and maybe a people who are a few steps behind you on the path and then when you're strong you can help those behind you and when you're feeling weak those ahead of you can encourage you this Christian exposure to relationships biblical Christian mature relationships helps us just helps us didn't we miss it in the pandemic when we couldn't even be in the same room when everything was online don't get me wrong I'm a fan of online I do love all of that stuff but it's and not all it's both and and we need relationship real relationships again the writer to Hebrews he says and let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds not giving up in a meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. You know there's a day approaching? Jesus is going to be coming back. He's coming back for his church to take us to be with him. And we will be together for eternity. My goodness, if we haven't got to know each other by before, that's going to be a funny, funny gathering, isn't it? We arrive in heaven, we don't even know each other. We need someone alongside us, encouraging us, challenging us. We have a phrase in, our, in the culture, descriptors, that um, Pastor Jez talked about recently. It's that everything spoken is truth wrapped in love. We want to be people that encourage one another, that love one another, that don't shy away from speaking truth, a bit like I'm doing a bit today, challenging certain things, but in a, in a context of love. Because... Jesus says the most important is we love one another, love our neighbours. It will be a picture that others will see of us that will be attractive when we love one another. COVID may have wrecked habits. The beginning of a new year means sometimes we start resolutions, etc. But we choose. We make decisions. And those decisions have a, an impact on us. Devotion to God and friendships. If we build those into our rhythm of our life, they will help us. And a bit like if you, if you, if you forget something, like I do sometimes if I get interrupted and, and I, my hair's a mess or my glasses are dirty, um, if, if you get out of the habit, you just need to go back and, and, and relive it. I go back and do my hair, or I go back and clean my glasses. They're habits, they're things that are good for me. Reading our Bible, developing friendships with another. Let, let's not neglect them, because in the same way that somebody would notice if my hair's a mess, people will notice if, if you're not reading your Bible, you're not speaking in the light of what the Bible teaches, it's, it's obvious. If you're not in relationship with other Christians, it's obvious. Ultimately, it's about your character and everyone sees your character. Let's be encouraged to draw near and be examples of who he wants you to be in this culture which is so different to that. Let's be places and people who live by truth. Amen. You've risen with all power in your hands. You have given me a second chance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah.